Jane Fletcher was 19 when she was told that she only had months to live. Fortunately for her, a transplant operation gave her a second shot at life. But years on, she faces new challenges. I knew early on that if I caught COVID, my chances of survival were pretty much zero. Because of the transplant, Jane is immunocompromised. So not only does COVID pose a greater risk of killing her, but also a vaccine may not provide the protection she needs. It makes COVID treatment options more vital. COVID's not going away and these treatments, if they're available and if there's scientific merit for them, then yes, absolutely, the government should be putting funds towards uh, procuring them. At the moment, the only drug widely used to treat COVID patients in Australia is a steroid that is effective in severe cases. Whereas outside Australia, drugs called monoclonal antibodies are being used to treat patients earlier. Pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline has one of these drugs awaiting approval by the Therapeutic Goods Administration. They're in talks with the government, but told the ABC the pathway to access in Australia remains unclear. I think there's an urgent need for us to have better treatments for patients with COVID. Associate Professor Stephen Tong heads up the Australasian COVID trials. The sooner we have these treatments available, the better. And if we can expedite that process, we, we should do everything in our power to do so. The opposition says this means striking deals with manufacturers before TGA approval, if necessary. Last year we saw the government be far too slow in making sure that we purchase sufficient uh, and adequate supplies of the vaccines. We can't see that happen again. The Department of Health said in a statement it makes decisions on vaccines and treatments based on expert advice. Dan Oakes, ABC News.